So it already shows us how important it is to put, to have God as the ruler of our lives. Our Bible passage from Exodus 20 to 3 verse 5 will show us more about what idolatry truly is. Exodus 20 verse 3 to 5. I'm reading from the NLT version. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or any or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of parents upon their children and the entire family is affected, even the children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. So when we, when we talk about idolatry and idols, an idol is something that we regard and we, we create to be at the same level of God or to be greater than God. And when we practice idolatry, it's the active worship of these things, the active worship of someone or something as if it were to be greater than God. And so God says here, you must not have any other God but me. We can already see that this is a commandment from the Lord. You must not have any other God but me. And he then goes on to say in verse 5, For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, and will not tolerate your affection for any other God. In our lives, we can think of situations maybe when we have been jealous. Maybe we want to be in a position where we're not, and we, we want to have something that someone else has. In the same way, God is jealous for his creation. God wants to be the ruler of his creation. He created you in his own image, and there's no reason that something or someone else should have place of him in your life. Let's take a look at our introduction. So an idol is anything that replaces the one true God in our lives. It can be anything that appeals to our own heart more than God does, and anything that takes significant amount of our time, leaving us with little or no time to spend with him. As youths, as, as adults in this world, what do we truly spend our time with? You know, we go on about our day, we, we fill our days up with different activities, and then by the end of the night, we realize, wow, how much time have I truly spent with God? How much time have I truly spent in His presence? Anything that takes your time away from God has become an idol in your life. And so while the scripture condemns idolatry in strong terms, like we just read in Exodus, many Christians engage in idol worshiping today without even knowing it. And this is the key thing, without even knowing it. Previous weeks in Bible study, we talked about your spiritual eyes and being asleep, and how someone's eyes could be so dark that they think they're in light, but it's really darkness. So in the same way, many of us are living in idolatry and practicing this so... So it becomes our life that we don't even realize that we've made an idol before God. We don't even realize that we're putting things before him. And it's so much more worse when we can't even realize that we've made an idol before him. So our following outlines, number one, are the forms of modern-day idolatry. Forms of modern-day idolatry. So unlike the past, where idol worship is bowing down to statues and you know, objects typical of pagans in many cultures. Modern day idol worship is expressed through various insatiable pursuits and cravings of man driven by his sinful nature. So when typically in modern times, most people are not, you know, creating some sort of object and bowing down to that in their room. It's about the, the you know, the passion and the pursuit of things outside of God, outside of who God truly is. So these shift all attention to man, leaving God out of the equation. It is also expressed by portraying and painting God contrary to sound and total biblical precepts, but revealing him to suit personal values and ideologies. This is key because as adults, and when we, when we truly look at our children, how much time do we really spend with them throughout the day? They are spending six, seven, eight hours in school, extracurricular activities, and we don't really know what they're absorbing. This world has really, you know, tried to distort the image of the true God. You know, they'll, they'll tell them God is a woman. They'll tell them God was this. God, God is transgender. Crazy things. And this is what our children are truly 
soaking up when they're in the schools. So this now becomes idolatry in the sense that we're trying to twist who the one true living God is. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And quite often, modern day idolatry takes the form of one, self-worship expressed through aggressive pursuits and realization of goals and dreams in which God is excluded. It's funny because there are good things in this life and there are, it's good to have aspirations. But even the good things of life can become idols in our lives. Because people are in pursuing their dreams, pursuing their passions, we tend to stray away from how we get there because many of our youth, many of our adults are trying to reach greater heights, they're trying to reach new levels. But where does God truly come into that? Where does God come into play when you're trying to reach these greater heights? So this over, overly ob- obsession with, with, with trying to reach higher and greater places in life without bringing God along, we've then made an idol in the place of God. Number two, materialism. The new shoe comes out, you want that. The new bag comes out, you want that. We talked about loss of the eyes throughout the week. After we've lost it so much to, uh, towards all these material things and we finally possess them, we want more, we want more, we want more, we want more. Over time, this obsession with wanting the newest things, wanting the newest cars, wanting the newest things, you begin to chase them and that becomes an idol in its own. It's not bad to want the finer things in life, but when those things overtake you and truly you, you can't live without them. They've become an idol in your life. And these are just a few of the examples of modern-day idolatry we see today. Pride and ego. This one is really an issue among the youths these days. Pride and ego. This often makes, takes the form of obsession with careers, business, or job to increase social status. The obsession to, 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 to have a new name. Some of us... We came from a country where, you know, we were CEOs, we were big men, and then we come here and then, you know, maybe we're cleaners. And our pride and ego uh, has just been so shut down that we, we will do anything to get back to the level that we were. We'll do anything. We'll take all these false routes to get to the level that we once were, leaving God behind. Pride and ego has become such, such a, an issue among youth because it's, it's all about themselves. We can see... From Proverbs 8.13. Can somebody help us with Proverbs 8.13? If you're there, you can read. Fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So if you truly fear the Lord, pride should not be anything in your life. And when we're so, when we're so proud and our ego is, is really what rules over our life, we've made an idol. Because when, when we're proud and when, when we only care about the names. One day we want, to, we want to be the CEO. Next day we want to be managing director. We get to that position and we're not satisfied. Next we want to be vice chancellor of, of operations. And then, so where does it end? And so the pursuit of all these names, the pursuit of all these positions in life has now become an idol in our lives and has left God behind. This obsession with increasing one's social status in order to please men because truly... It's funny because the blessings that God gives us can also become idols in our lives. God has blessed you with this new job. God has blessed you with this new position. And then you say, no, I want more. I want this. And then you get there. And then, you know, I want, I want to become this. I want to become that. It's important, yes, as Christians, as people of God, to strive to be, you know, the best in what we do. But not to become overly obsessed with it, that it becomes an idol in our lives. And it becomes the God of our lives. Because when we do that... If, if we're not in that position, we feel that we're not satisfied. And God is not satisfactory enough for us, truly. Idolizing fellow humans. This is also a major issue. Honoring renowned individuals above God. Among our youth, we idolize these movie stars. We idolize the, these musicians. And truly, most of these musicians, 
that of the world. How often do you truly see our youth even painting, you know, the Christian artists in a good light? We only follow, you know, the whiskeys and the Davidos. We, 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 we want to talk like them. We want to look like them. We want to walk like them. We want, we want to sound like them so much that when we wake up in the morning, we, we have to check our social media and see what they're doing. We have to check our social media and see, see what they're saying so we could be like them. We've placed these people who, who, the same people in this world that even rebuke your own God, the same people who even mock your own God, we've made them idols of our lives. And this is such an issue among our children. So us as parents, we really need to really look at who our children look up to. Because again, when they're away from us, when they're in the schools, who, who, is, truly, who is truly their God? Because we, we let them spend so much time on media, eight plus hours, nine plus hours, using you know, these computers, using these laptops. And then eventually, we start to see different behaviors in them. You know, uh, children, you tell them to become more and more lawless over time. You tell them to do this, they say, no, leave me alone, you're not my mom. You say, please take this away. No, you're not my father. You can't talk to me like that. And this is a result of idolatry because they see all these things through the media. Those people that we see see online become their gods and they stray away from who the living God truly is. Naturalism and the power of science. So this cling to the illusion that man is the lord of this wor- of his world due to scientific and technological breakthroughs. You know, astrology. So many of us try to be super scientific and theologians and try to create this image of God in our head through science. And the truth is that science is limited. Science can only do so much. Science can never prove to you that God exists because science is limited and God is not. So we use science and we create, we say the earth was made from explosions, was made from evolution, each day straying away from who God truly is. And over time, that, that scientific explanation, those scientific methods become idols because now we believe, oh, we're our own mini-gods. We believe we're, the, we're, we're here because of ourselves. So it becomes an idol in our lives. Number six, self-indulgence through alcohol, drugs, excessive watching of TV, Excessive um, abnormal use of social media, clubbing, gambling, among other things. This over ob- obsession with self-pleasure, self-indulgence. Each and every moment, you have to be doing something that pleases yourself. Some people have been become so obsessed with the drugs and the alcohol. You know, fornicators, they'll, they'll tell you, I can't sleep until I've had sex. I cannot sleep until I've, I, I've drank. And so I, at this point... We've become so spiritually numb that those things have become the God of our lives. Because now you're under the control and under the influence of all these worldly substances. Who is truly your God? You tell yourself, I cannot sleep without this. I cannot sleep without that. Your body is itching. Your body is itching to, to be pleased. And so now it has become an idol in your life. So indulge with the things of this world. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And so we understand that Idolatry is a no in the, in the eyes of God. So let's take a look at some of the consequences of modern-day idolatry. Deviation from the laws and teachings of the Lord. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 4. If you're there, please read for us. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 4. This know also... That in the last days, very lost times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, eddy, high minded. Lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. Amen. Thank you, sir. For a time is coming, verse 3, when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. We can already see that we're in the end times. And with modern day idolatry, we can see more and more that people are straying away from wholesome teaching. You know, the Message Bible puts this so well. It says, verse 3, you're going to find that there will be times when people will have no stomach for solid teaching but will fill up on spiritual junk food. No stomach. You can think of your earthly body. The more, more of what you eat is more of what you're going to crave. 
you go to the doctor and they tell you you have, you know, high blood sugar, high whatever, because you're filling up on all these junk food. And the more, you, the more junk and the more junk that you eat, the more you're going to crave. So the more, the more spiritual junk food that we fill our spirit up with, especially as children, as youth, the more spiritual junk we fill ourselves up with, the more spiritual junk we're going to crave. Over time, we'll see that we, we, crave, we crave to be in God's presence less. We crave to, 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 to chase after God less because we filled ourselves up with nonsense. We, we watch what goes on in the media. We filled ourselves up with that. And we've created, we've made that our gods, that we strayed away from the living God. And the funny thing is, because Jesus Christ is the living God, anything that has become the God over your, over your life, if you find life in Christ and he's your God, what do you think you're going to find if, if someone or something else is your God? Because surely it's not life. It, it, it's surely not life. It has to be death. And so... Deviation from laws and teachings of the Lord. Over time, our children care less and less about what is edifying their spirits. When we're supposed to be, you know, on fire for Christ, all we care about is the spiritual junk filling up our body. Loss of zeal for the things of God. As we just, we can open to 2 Timothy 4 verse 10 briefly. Loss of zeal and things of the Lord. We can see that our youths, more and more, they care less about, about wanting to be involved in the things of God. The thing, the thing is that God's kingdom can never prevail without zealous people, without people who are eager to march and, and, and to, to, to lift him higher. But over time, when our life is so encapsulated with idolatry, when we make these gods over our lives, we see that we lose zeal for the things of God. It, it becomes hard to pray. It becomes hard to, you know, you're asking yourself, I, I can't pray. Why, why, why do I have to, you know, read my Bible? Why do I have to come to this? Why do I have to come to this service? Loss of the... Uh, the zeal for things of God is a consequence of idolatry, and we're seeing this mainly in our youth these days. Generational departure from the one true God. Hosea 4 verse 17. Hosea 4 verse 17. Ephraim is joined to idols. Leave him alone. Mm -hmm. The NLT version says, leave Israel alone. Because she is married to idolatry. So really, this should put into perspective how truly evil and, and horrible idolatry is in the life of a believer. Because imagine, God forbid, put yourself in that situation where God is able to look at you and say, leave so and so alone, she's married to idolatry. Leave this person alone, she's married to idolatry. Eventually, when we're married to idolatry, when we're married to idolatry, God could even say, leave this person alone because they've made up their mind that they're going to make their own image of God. They've made up their mind that they're going to, to create this image of God that God is saying, leave them alone. And we know if God has truly left you alone, that's a recipe for disaster. I pray that the Lord will never leave us alone in Jesus' name. Eternal separation from God. Eternal separation from God. We all know that the wages of sin is death. And because idolatry is... is, is is shunned in God's eyes. We know that if we are involved in idolatry, if we create idols before him, eventually, now maybe we won't die physically, but eventually we'll become spiritually dead. And again, when we're spiritually dead and we continue to live in that, eventually we'll be dead fully and we'll be separated from God eventually. I pray that that will not be our case in Jesus' name. Incurring of divine causes, Daniel 4 verse 30 to 33. Concurring of divine causes. With idolatry, as an individual, if you don't truly know who the living God is, if you truly don't seek who God is for himself, what chance do your children have of truly finding him? We see that if you yourself are not involved in the things of God, over time, generations after generations, we begin to stray away from who God truly is. And through idolatry, we worship all these, all these images. We, we create images of God in our mind. We, be, we bring curses upon ourselves because if God is life and we're not in that life, we're not in Christ, we're not crucified in Christ, the only thing coming to us are negative things, are curses. And these things could be generational. We see why our children are struggling with this. Oh, because truly in my own time, I've created an idol before God. Why are my children struggling with this? not knowing that it's, 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 I've created an image before God and I've not served God wholeheartedly. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. 
In conclusion, self-worship is the basis of, basis of all modern idolatry. Self-worship. Myself, myself, myself. I'm the God over my life. It's a lifelong battle in Christian life that must be resisted. It must be resisted. And we know in um, Ephesians 6 verse 11 that if we really put on the whole armor of God, that we'll be able to resist the devil and to fight against everything. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word this morning. Lord, we ask that you have mercy upon us this morning. If there's any way we've created idols before you, help us, Father, to remove every idol we've created before you so we can stay away from the consequences. Help our children and our youth, Father, to know who you truly are and to seek you in all that we do. And let your will be done forever in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, it's time for our opening prayer. Can we please rise up as we pray? Let us begin to thank God for today. Oh, let us begin to worship God. Let us begin to exalt His holy name. Let's give Him all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for this gathering today. Oh, let your name alone be highly exalted. Let us begin to ask for mercy. Is there any way that we've come short of the glory of God? Let us begin to plead for mercy. Father, we ask, oh Lord, that you please have mercy upon us today in the name of Jesus. Father, we plead for mercy as a church, as a body, as an individual. Father, we ask, oh Lord, for mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let us pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let us pray for the nations in the world that God let your peace reign, most especially in Israel and Gaza right now. A lot is going on. Let us pray because God is a God of peace. Let us pray for unity. Let us pray for peace. Let us pray for freedom. I can begin to mention so many nations now that are going through a lot is going on. Let us pray for peace of Jerusalem. Father, we pray, oh Lord, for Israel. We pray for Israel that your peace will reign in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray that God will put an end into every war that is going on. Ah, Father, Lord of mercy, we might say that, oh, it really doesn't affect us and all, but then we have people there, we have believers there. Name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray for Canada. In Canada, you cannot go to any organization without hearing, oh, I'm gay, I'm confused, I'm lesbian, I'm this and that. Ah, let us pray that God in this generation, people will not be confused again. Ah, there's confusion going on everywhere. People will say they are there and them. Who is there and them? Ah, God, every form of confusion in this land, in this nation, oh God, you will put an end to it. In the name name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is causing our generation to be saying that, oh, I'm a man, but I'm a lady. Our Father, Lord,
up, you will put an end to it. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to put the youths, the youths all over the world, in the hand of God, that God will continue to shield us with his armor. In the name of Jesus Christ, he will cover us with his armor. In the name of Jesus Christ, he will protect us. Let us also put believers in, in, the, God, in, in, in the hand of God, that God will continue to strengthen us. Don't let us be ignorant of the word of God. Even the word of God says that an ignorant believer is a defeated believer. Ah, let us pray that we will not be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. That we will not be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us now pray because there is no limitation in the ability for God to supply. In this service today, that God will supply everything that we need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us cover this service, O oh Lord, unto God, son, that everything God will take control. He will give us power to function and unction in the name of Jesus Christ. The preacher, the ministration, everything, let us cover it in the blood of Jesus. That God will come and take control. It's not just the youth that will be, that will be doing everything today, but the Holy Spirit will come and take over in the name of Jesus. Because we know we cannot do it by ourselves and the Holy Spirit needs to take control. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We pray Begin this service in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning, church. The hymn for today is taken from page 178, no, number 380. Page 178, number 380.
stand upon the throne. We raise a sound. We raise a sound. And for you are God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And on to the 
Good morning, church. I'm here to present a spoken word called, You Are Not Alone. May you be blessed as you listen in Jesus' name. I am Mark, get set, go. The race begins, this race called life, with curves and turns through pebbles and rocks, over turns and hurdles, and then there's the finish line. Almost there, just a few more steps, you say. I can do it myself, I'm almost there. Suddenly, you drop down. Oh no, you fell. You pushed and pushed, but it looks like you can't anymore. Everyone is cheering you on to get up, pick up, keep on. You, but all you can see is the fall. All you can feel is the pain. All you want to do is give up on life. You've tried and you have, don't give up. You can do it, they say. They don't understand. You just don't want to continue. You can't continue. You have tried and you have failed. You want them to stop cheering you on. They don't see the pain and tears behind the defeat because you won't let them. And when they finally stop, now they see you, the fallen, the defeated, or so they think. In despair, you cry out, why, Lord, why me? What did I do to you? Why do you hate me? Why don't you love me? Why do you let me go through this alone? Why do you let me go through this pain alone? Why do you let me go through these challenges alone? Why do you let me go through these troubles of the world by myself? Why did you bring me into this world just to abandon me? You want time to stop, but it won't. You cry yourself out empty. Emptiness attracts its minions lurking in the shadow, waiting for you to fully give up, give up on life so it can control you. Sadly, in the mindset of defeat, you let them. They toss you around like a rag doll. You become the mop stick for the floor of pain. Why? Why did you allow this to happen to you? Why did you allow emptiness and despair become your companion? Why did you let failure become your burden instead of a stepping stone? Why wait for another deliverer when the one who has redeemed you has set before you death and life? Choose life. Get up, I say, arise. This shadow has stayed long enough. Tell it to his face, it has no room in me. Tell it to his face, you have overstayed your welcome. Tell it to his face, there's no room for darkness and light in me. You are gone from me forever. Grab it by the arm and kick it out. It's time for a change. God is saying, it's time for you to change. No more, pe no more tears, no more pain. It's time for, wipe them clear. Wipe your state clear. You are a new person in Christ, past players notwithstanding. You no longer have to go through life as if you are alone. God is with you. Let him be in control. He has plans for you. His plans are good. You will prosper in it. He is not done with you. He is just getting started. Leave these worries behind. He will take care of them. Receive strength now. Get up. Get back into the race. The finish line is ahead. Go for it. Not because you believe in yourself, because he believes in you. If he gave his only begotten son just for his sake, what more would he not do? No, he's with you until the end of time. You are not alone. Keep running. I say it again, you are not alone. Amen. You are welcome to the RCCG Hemsworth Parish the people in whom God delights. You are welcome to February, our month of spiritual reawakening. You are welcome to the RCCG Hemsworth Parish, the people in whom God delights. You are welcome Isn't it? Amen. I welcome you all to the first year service of the year 2024. I pray that every blessing that the Lord has in store for us will come to us in Jesus' name. Please, this is the announcement for this morning. 
Good morning, church. This is to remind us that our fasting and prayer this month special Rhoda service comes up this Friday, and it will be included in our corporate prayers on Friday and Saturday by 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Please let's endeavor to join. This is to invite everyone to join us in celebrating our Father in the Lord as he celebrates his 82nd birthday. There will be a special praise and worship session to appreciate God on behalf of him, on his behalf. The time will be 6.30 p.m. on Friday, Monday, the 26th of February at the RCCG Ebziba Parish. The Lord bless you and honor us as we celebrate our Father in the Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I have just one testimony written. Good morning, church. I just want to appreciate the goodness of God in my life because he is my God. I just want to thank God for allowing me to pass my road test. I made a promise with him that if I passed my road test, I would give him back all the glory. And here I am to say to give God all the glory. Praise the Lord. This testimony is from PD. I want to ask that if this is your first time worshiping with us at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Epsiba Parish, please can you kindly rise while we bid you our warm welcome. Okay, we have one. Hallelujah. Jesus, you will go back the way. Thank you very much. You're welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Ebziba Parish, a place where God delights to these people. We say you're welcome. You know, you being here is not a coincidence, but it is by the divine will of God. And therefore, we pray that the Lord who has ordered your steps here will guide you and will give you a fresh time as miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. The ushers are going to hand over a card to you. We ask that you please fill it up so we can get your information. And after the service, there will be a meet and greet with the pastorate. Amen. Thank you very much. You can please be seated. It's time to gather our offerings. Please let's gather our offerings and give him praise for everything he has given to us. Let's give him thanks. Because of him, that is why we can be in his presence with all full joy and everything. Please let's just gather our offerings. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for today. We say be exalted in Jesus' name. Father Lord, we are here again to give you our offerings as we say thank you to Jesus. As we say thank you to you. Father, be exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you accept our worship and we accept our offerings in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. And may your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Children of God, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've come again. Oh. <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's go. Amen.
Again, again. One, two, three. Let's go.
Amen. Amen. Uh, that was a very good exercise, right? Do that. You do that. Pull it up. You throw it away. Hallelujah. Then you know Buga, right? God have mercy. Let's have our seat for a moment. But let's celebrate the youth. Amen. That, that was powerful. You know, I was seated there strategically so that I would be able to hear from different teachers. And I saw Semi doing a wonderful job there. They call him Semi, but we know him as Semi Lore, you know. Uh, so he was doing one. Israel was here, you know, preaching to pastors. And we have uh, Debbie there and uh, Vicky. Hallelujah. Uh, then the, the, Percy at the back. The Lord is wonderful, you know. We can see how God has really been sustaining and helping our youth. Let's celebrate Jesus for that. Amen. The person that is going to preach to us today is a member of PSF. That's Pastor Seed for all of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. He's an architect by profession. Uh, somehow, about two decades ago, the Lord used his father uh, to stabilize the sheep of our life. Uh, we will never forget how the Lord helped us through him. So he has been in Winnipeg for a while now, but we decided to bring him in today. So be ready. The father is one of our provincial pastors in Nigeria. So you can imagine, the Bible said in Psalm 112 verse 2, Psalm 112 verse 2 says, uh, the seed of the righteous they are mighty in the land so uh, you, you see prophetic grace you see a teaching grace you see an apostolic grace all together being manifested this morning let's celebrate brother Emmanuel Emmanuel Oladoye please clap for Jesus not for him but clap for Jesus just clap for Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you are getting there. You are getting there. No packaging this morning, no. No packaging this morning. Tell your neighbor, no packaging this morning. Leave the daddies and mommies. Leave them. Leave them. They don't rate us now, but don't worry. Don't worry. Tell them we are coming. We are coming. Come on, youth in the house. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Um, Daddy, mommy, thank you so much. I'm grateful. Thank you for bringing me here. Please celebrate, Daddy. Celebrate. They've labored over us in this house. Thank you so much, Daddy. Thank you so much, mommy. I celebrate the pastorate. I thank you. The youth leadership. Everybody, thank you for having me this morning. And I pray that this morning will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Can you just lift your hands to heaven and just worship Jesus this moment? Open your mouth wide and say something to your father. He's not a stranger. You know him. He knows you. Speak to him this morning. Say, Father, I bless you. Father, I bless you. I bless your name. I worship you. Eternal God, you are worthy to be praised. <speaking in Spanish> Recapato si panda kata limbrado shepekete librado sea Recapata limbrando so poco to librada shakata librado sea Anana nina mania kaya Recapata nina nema leprado si pete lebrado sea Recapata nama kata libre de gede 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 From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to come on, lift your voice. Adonai, Adonai. from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Almighty God, we are here. We are here for an encounter this morning. We are here to meet with the Holy One of Israel. We are here to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are in your presence approaching the throne of grace in humility this morning. Father, we worship you. This morning, glorify your name in our lives. Send forth your word in our midst. The Bible says he sent forth his word and his word healed them. He delivered them. This morning, let there be deliverance in the house. In the name of Jesus. At the end of everything we do this morning, Father, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Come on, celebrate Jesus this morning. FC Bar, I celebrate you this morning. I hope you are the delight of the Lord. Because I saw that name and I was excited. It sprung up something in me. FC Bar. Mm. Amen. This morning I'm going to be speaking briefly on understanding the times. Understanding the times. What is it about this time? What is it about this present time that we are in? Every generation, they say, is the worst. There's no generation that comes. Our elders will say, ah, this generation, I don't understand what's going on. These people are just, they're just somehow. Every generation have their own details. They have their own culture. They have their own intricacies. They have so many things, peculiarities to them. Our fathers were more, you know, calm, calm. If you see Pastor Adeboye, you know, our daddy is calm. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Simple, easy, straight to the point. But in our generation, we are more charismatic. We are more energetic. We like to show. You can see that song that we sang now, doing everything and everything. Everything is packaging. Amen? <laughs> we like packaging. But I'm here to present to you this morning that God is still very, very much interested in us. He loves us and he has so many sons. If you're a son of Christ, let me see your hand in the house. Come on, be confident. Yes, I'm the son of God. Amen. So understanding the times, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, we read from verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Next verse, please rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. There are three things I would like to point out there. One, rooted. Two, built up. Three, established in the faith. These are the three processes that a modern day believer must go through to stand as light in his generation. Some of us, we skipped so many steps. You skipped rooted. You are built up. You look like the portrait of a believer. You know, you wear special suits on a Sunday morning. You have glammed up, speaking tongues, all of that. But no root, no depth. You don't understand the word. You don't pray. Everything is packaged. It's just like a building. You know, God is working in us and he gives us capacity for the work he has sent us to do. So imagine God is going seven stories. And you lay the foundation of bungalow. And God is saying, it's not time to build. But you are not ready. You are ready. You want to, want to blow. You want to trend. You want them to say, man of God has arrived. But God is saying, wait. Relax. Tell your neighbor, relax. Relax. 
We want to overthrow our fathers. Hey, Daddy, mommy, leave this thing for us. But God is saying, there is no depth. You are shallow. And God is saying, there's a reason why rooted came first before built. He could have said built up and rooted. He said what? Paul said, rooted and built. That means you must be rooted before you are being built up. Then you will be established in the what? In the faith. Some of us today, we have so many things going on in our lives. And the problem starts from here, rooted. We are not rooted. Every wind of doctrine that comes, phew, before we know it, ah, that's deep, that's deep, we go with that. This one has come with another rema, that's deep, that's deep. You change what you heard yesterday. Amen. Next verse, please. And Paul warns us, he says, beware. Tell someone, beware. Say it with boldness, beware. beware. Or let me use our language, no grief. Uh-huh. <laughs> I caught your attention there. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Beware. I've understood that in every generation there's a culture, like I said. There's a culture, there's a way we do things. And when you moved from Nigeria, let me use our word, Jackba from Nigeria, and you came to Canada, there is a system that is operating here. When we got here, we say, ah, the system works. In Nigeria, the system is not working. But that's the physical system. And in every culture, the first thing you see is, you see something that is very, very um, clear to you in their culture. First, you see language. The language is different. They say, pros, 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 you know. That your abuli Egba English is not working here. You have to step up, you know. The language is the first thing you see. Two, you see their dressing. You see the way they dress. They don't dress like this. There's a reason why I wore this, so that you can remember that we came from somewhere. Amen. You see their dressing. You see the way they are dressed. Those are the, those are the visible part of culture. But there's something beneath. It's like an iceberg. When you see an iceberg, you see the top. But there's something beneath. The invisible part of culture, that is the system. That is what you need to understand in the time. Forget the peripheral. Forget that the system is working. Forget that the English is good. Forget that, you know, their food. They don't even have food there, but their food, you know. You see their food. But there are some things that are beneath those visible things that are operating. And those are the things we need to understand if you must prevail in a place like this. Mommy said told me something, the first, one of the first few encounters I had with mommy. Mommy said, this land swallows giants. That stuck in me. It rang a bell in me. It twitched something in me. Mommy, what do you mean this land swallows giants? When you are coming into a new system, once you step into that system, that system will test what you are bringing. There are so many examples in the scriptures. Daniel. Daniel was uprooted from Jerusalem. He was uprooted in a cov- he was uprooted from a covering. He was among priests. He was among his people. He was among his culture. He was uprooted and brought into Babylon. Do, do you know how Babylon was? How the Bible described Babylon? It was, the, it was like their own modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. They were doing everything possible. Yet, Daniel was brought into that system. And there was a physical idol standing before him saying, the king commanded you must bow to this idol. Now, there's no king telling us, but we have idolized culture. It's not a physical structure anymore. It's the internet. It's social media. It's validation from other people. Those are our idols now. Yes. Are we truly standing? David faced his own system. By the way, systems are not people. It's, it's not about the person. Like I said, you have to understand what is happening before him. David faced Goliath. Goliath is, was not a person. Goliath was a system. Was a system of oppression. Was a system of fear. He said, bring me a man to fight against me. Today, I defile the children of Israel. 
What was he saying? His system, he brought a system, he challenged the system before them. And he says, bring me a man. Can God find a man in this system that is still standing? Something sprung up in David. When he heard it, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Today, some things have, you know, you are not in a new culture. You are saying you must acclimatize to what is going on here. So when you see some things, you, shh, may they know, cancel me. I don't want them to cancel me. You keep quiet. David, young guy, he was not even a soldier. He came to the battlefield, they sent him, where and boy, go and give your brother's food. What concerns him with what was going on with Goliath? But there was something working in him. There was a system already working in him. He knew the God he was serving. When this uncircumcised feelings then came, he said what? Who are you to be talking this way? He was bold. He was courageous. But he was not just bold. He was not just shallow. He had encounters to dwell on. Because when Saul asked him, can you this small boy, can you do what you're saying? What did he tell Saul? He said, Saul, <laughs> I've killed the lion. I've killed bear. There was a track record. He was rooted. Mm. He was rooted. He wasn't just making mouth. He wasn't just shouting. He wasn't an empty barrier. Amen. There are kings. There are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are thrones. Only Yeshua we reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Amen. Let me just give you one more. Second service, we'll talk about the other ones. Jezebel was a sister. Let me give the partner of Jezebel, Delilah. You know, they are both twin sisters. Same order of things. Brothers, hear this one very well. Jezebel was a system, a system of immorality. Delilah, Kai. Let's read the scriptures. Let's open to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. The Bible described Delilah's. So, in case you find yourself in this, sorry, I'm sorry in advance. Amen. Give me NLT, if you have NLT, please. All right. The woman named Foley is brash. She is ignorant and doesn't know it. If you hear some other translation, you said, this woman is loud. She has no sense of eternal value. She's loud. She's restless. She's brash. So that the ladies do not think I'm attacking them alone. Proverbs 7, 7. Let's look at the guy version of Delilah. You think they are not guy versions of Delilah? Proverbs 7, verse 7. Thank you, media. God bless you. Thank you. And I saw among the naive and descend among the youths a man lacking what? Amen. So they are male Delilahs too. We don't have name for them yet. Don't worry. Generation. We know how to give names now. Give them names. These are systems that are working amongst us that we must be aware of. Delilahs. They are there to bring down mighty men. Amen. All right. Let's move on. I remember when I was in secondary school. How many of you went to secondary school in Nigeria? Don't be shy. I know it's high school, they call it high school. Sorry, high school. How many of you went to high school? Yes. We used to write something called Waek, right? And when we get to SS3, then there's a culture in my school. Even if you are brilliant, you must still use Orijo, whether you like it or not. Even if you are brilliant, it's just to support. They will tell you it's just to support. We know you are good. We know you have sense. You have read. But I was a believer then. I was even the chaplain's boy. I'm always... But I conformed. Why? Because it was a culture. I just found myself in the culture. And everybody was doing it. It was normal. It didn't even feel like a sin. It was later when I left. God taught me a story. I'll tell you the story. Just 
I passed the wire. Fine colors. Daddy was happy. Mommy was happy. Everybody was happy. And me too, I was not too bad because I knew I had sense too. And I just used that one to support. <laughs> but where God will catch me was when I was about to write post jam, post UTME. You might not understand, sorry, if you are in high school. All right. Post UTME, my dream school was Obafemi Aulawa University. I wanted to go to OAU. I wanted to practice architecture there. I've heard so many things. I used to abuse everybody that goes to private school. They don't have sense. If you are going to private school, you are not brilliant. So my goal was to go to Obafemi Aulawa University. I was writing Post UTME. I was seated here. There was a space, and our head boy was sitting two seats away from me. So there was communication. He was the most brilliant in my class. Me, maybe like fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh. I'm not sure. I was sure I did. Amen. So it was divided into four parts, physics, chemistry, biology, English or so. I finished in 20 minutes or 30 minutes. I think it was like 45 minutes. I finished. I was done. I was like, ah, thank God. Though. It was not as hard as I thought. And I was like, ah, hmm. something just spoke to me. Sure you not cross check with Ed Boy so that you know if you did well. So I was like, ah, Damola, Damola, Alpha, Alpha. Call one to five. Call one to five. <laughs> Damola called one to five. Nothing was the same on my own. Say, ah, <laughs> I say, I say, what's going on here? Oh yeah, call chemistry. That's physics. Maybe it's just physics I did not get. Call chemistry. Nothing was the same. Then I just started erasing everything I did, and I started conforming what he was doing to my own. When we were done, I was happy. I said, ah, thank God. That's how I feel, though. That's how I feel. Then I was like, Damola, what was number one? What was number one question in physics? The number one question in physics in his own was different from my own. <laughs> brethren, men and brethren, I said maybe it was just the first one. Number two, number two, let me check number two. Totally different. So it, they, they were different types. But my cheating level that time was intermediate, so I didn't know. I didn't know. My dreams, my hopes, everything. Phew. How will I explain to my father, a pastor? And by then, my dad was the provincial pastor of Oshun. So it was easy. He knew the VC or the register. He just need, I just needed to get like 200 in the OCTM and daddy will me carry my this thing to this thing. How will I tell my father that it was because I cheated that I did not pass? But God was teaching me something. I crowed, I cried, I crewed, you know. <laughs> I did all the crying. In fact, water dried up. I locked myself in the room. A number I was scared. I didn't want my daddy to know. So it was not because, because of the crying. But God taught me something. From that day, I made a vow I will never in my life cheat anymore. And by the grace of God, I went through university, finished top of my class. I didn't go to OAU. I went to Bells, Bells University, private university for the less intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> but I finished top of my class. I didn't just finish top of my class. I finished best in the department. I finished best in the college. And I thought it was just undergraduates. I was like, maybe the anointing is just for undergraduates. Same thing postgraduates. Why am I telling you this story? You can easily get conformed to a pattern. If the system you are working with, you are not rooted in it, before you know, they will evangelize you, evangelists, and you'll be saying that is deep, that is true. Paul said what? Beware of philosophy. What is philosophy? The love of wisdom, school of thoughts. There are so many school of thought on the internet today. Men has come is one of it. And I'm sure some of you believe it. Don't lie. Everybody cheats. It's now a norm. Divorce is normal. It's normal. It's normal. It's normal. I read an article recently. Not an article. I was listening to a podcast recently. And the person said, less Gen Zs are getting married these days. Why? Or they said they don't even want to give birth to children again. Why? Why do you think that is? Because parenting is one of the only non-transactional relationships you can ever have. You can divorce your partner, but you can't divorce your children. So we are not ready. We need to be rooted. So many school of thoughts out there. How about your identity? Identity crisis everywhere. You don't know who you are. You allow the internet define you. 
There's, there, there, there are different types of identity. There's the Christian identity. There's the modern identity. There's the traditional identity. Let me tell you how it works. The traditional identity, identity of our fathers, that's what they worked with before they came to Christ. Yeah? The identity was defined by their career. So if, if you're a doctor, you are, respect, you are respectable, you do well in your career, you know, you have a good family. That's the identity. They say, ah, he's a family man, he's a good guy. And he understands that, and that's what he bases that on. So if that family crashed, that's the end of his identity. What about the modern identity? The modern identity does not look outside. They'll say, look inside, find yourself. It's you. Everything is you, you, you. Do you, be you. You, 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 you. Everything is about you. They say, look inside of you and find yourself. And you don't, the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. You cannot find your identity from you. So what do we have now? We have people that, what modern identity now preaches is that, take that identity in you that you found in your heart. Now, demand that we conform to that identity. You now demand that we that, nothing concerns us with what you are thinking you are to. You now say, all of you must call me a boy because in my heart I'm a boy. Everybody must call me. So what? The confusion is, is terrible. But what does the Christian identity preach? It is not achieved, but it is received. Your identity is not by what you do. It's by who God has called you to be. Amen. What about tradition of men? What about tradition of men? Let's talk about language. Have you ever heard Canadians speak? Like, in Canadian, sorry, you're in Canada. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know you're in Canada. When they speak, do you listen to the way they speak? In my place of work, everywhere, pa 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 F you, F you. Oh, what do you mean? F you, man. F you, man. And some of us now, we're already Fing you. <laughs> Low key, before you know, you're a You don't come, ah. Son of oil. Ah. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let's hear how the, our own culture teaches us to speak. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. If you have amplified, please give me. 429, amplified. Do not let awesome, in bracket, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth. I know, probably not ready before. But that's our culture. That's the culture that we are in. That's the system we are working in. So when you come to Canada, it will test it. Ah, are you truly this? Do you, you know? Some of us don't even know who we are until we come. When they come, they will give you an identity. They will give you. Don't worry. If you don't have, they will give you. It's plenty. <laughs> it's plenty. What about money? How does the world define money? Your money is your own. All this tight offering is a lie. It's daddy that is eating the money. It's mommy, it's, it's mommy that is buying shoes and clothes with your tight and offering. But that's not true. That's not how our system works. Do you know the essence of titan? Titan is not the money. God concerns God with the money. It's not the money. Titan is because of you. There are few things that the Bible compared with God. One is money. You cannot save God and mammon. Another one is wine. Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a reason why the Bible said that. God cannot be compared with anything. But these things are systems in our world that we must be careful of. Titan helps our heart. It brings us under. It tells us that mm -mm, you are not saving money. You are beyond money. Give. Giving. Titan. These things are for our heart. It's not necessarily how much are we earning? How much? He said cattle on a thousand eels. He owns, he owns it all. But it is what he does in us. When you are squeezing out some of us, squeeze it out. <laughs> Giving that thing. You know, it's even easier here. I mean, it looks easier here because I think the government gives you back some money or something. You know, it, has, it looks easier. But back home in Nigeria, <laughs> every service, bring offering. <laughs> <laughs> stress. Amen. <laughs> ah, let me give you one more. Freedom. Our perception of freedom. What does the society tell us about freedom? Do whatever you like. 
But in our kingdom, it is not so. All these things are... Kai, it's not so. In the kingdom, you can't do whatever you like. What you like does not conform to what God likes. Because your heart is terrible. That's why David kept saying, create in me a clean heart. Renew right spirit within me. Be not be drunk in one, but be being filled. Be being filled continually, every day. You have to choose God every day. Speaking in tongues for 12 hours is not enough. That one is for that day. It has gone. Some of us will speak in tongues two hours. Next one week. Ah, that two hours has covered next one week. It's renewal every day. The freedom we have in Christ says all things are lawful. But not all things are expedient. Yes, you can eat as much as you can. Doesn't mean you should eat as much as you can. Mm. Yes, God has made us free. He said, who the sun sets free is free indeed. But we are free in, because eventually what you start doing in your freedom, you become a slave to it eventually. As those people that are free to do anything, you find that most of them, they, they become addicted to what they are. I'm free to have sex. I'm free to smoke ego, you know. I can, can do all of that. Or those people that are drunkards, that drink wine. You say, ah, the Bible do not say it's a sin. Tell them to stop drinking and you see where the problem is. Mm-mm. Maybe they said they are free. Tell them to stop that thing they are doing. And you see if they are free or not. If they don't know in the spiritual world, you cannot, it's one way. Is either you are here or you are here. You can't stay on the fence. Mm-mm, you can't. There's no fence. Tell your neighbor, stay one side. Let's know you. Reveal yourself now. So what can I do? What can I do? Let's, let me round up quickly. What can I do? How can I stand as light in this generation? Number one, set your affection. Tell your neighbor, set your affection. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Quickly, Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Colossians 3 verse 2. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, and not on things on earth. Don't get carried away with PR. Don't get carried away with citizenship. Don't get carried away because you want to get married. Don't get carried away because you want to have children. Set your affection. You can set it. You can set your desire. That's why we pray, God put your desire in me. So that the things you begin to desire are the things God desire. Because if we leave it to your desire, problem, problem, big problem, terrible problem. Set your affection. You can set it. Have convictions. Like David. David did not just come out and face Goliath. He said, I have killed bear. I have killed lion. What convictions do you have? I, 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 at my workplace, there was a Muslim boy. His name. You don't need his name. There was a Muslim boy in my workplace. He's 19 or thereabouts. So he's really Gen Z. And the way he speaks about Islam... Oh my word. I was like, if we have a 19-year-old Christian, this one will defeat that, like, finish you. Because a regular 19-year-old now, no, which rooted? This guy was, he was telling me that he wants to evangelize the whole of the retail store I work in. We were just driving, I was like, ah, what do you think about Islam and all those things? I said, he wants to evangelize his manager. I said, ah, you want to evangelize? And the manager is a white man. He said he wants to convert him. 19-year-old, Muslim. How many Christians, 19-year-old, has that mindset? How many of us? This guy was always giving me a ride around 11. Why was, why was he giving me a ride? He doesn't live where I live. But because his mosque is there, every time he leaves work around 11, he will go to mosque before he goes back home. 19. I said, what was I doing in my life at 19? <laughs> Was I really serving God the way this guy? Even if they are religion, you know, we have so many buttons to say about it. But the convictions they have, oh my. We don't have that conviction. You come here and you just segregate. You, you, we like men dealing with the crowd. We don't want to stand out. I beg, make I just I find one place for you. Let me just dress the way they are dressed so that you don't see, where is this one? This one is African. Oh, oh please. Isaiah 50 verse 7. Isaiah 50 verse 7. Isaiah 50 verse 7. Just give me KJV. Isaiah 50 verse 7. 
<clears throat> For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. Another version will say like a stone at core. Amen. Number two, practice discipline. It's practice. Discipline is not by God send the angel of discipline upon me. There's no agent of discipline. You practice it. You have to practice it. Proverbs 31 verse 3. Proverbs 31 verse 3 to 4. Proverbs 31 verse 3 to 4. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It's practice. Solomon, with all his wisdom, that guy, with all his sense that God gave him, he still went ahead to marry 700. Practice discipline. If not, it will catch up with you eventually. Practice it. Don't go to... It's, it's discipline to not go to a sister's house that lives alone. It's just discipline. It's not that you don't like her. It's not like you don't want to pray with her. It's not that you don't... Gen Z. It's just discipline. My dad used to say something. Anytime you and your lady find yourself in the same place, alone, the third person there is not God. It's the devil. It's the devil. It's not God. So practice it. Reduce the number of women you chat with on Instagram. It's just practice. It's, it's not like we know you are a strong believer. We know you are just trying to minister and evangelize them and bring them to church and all of that. Reduce it. Practice. Practice. I'll give you some other ones in the next service because of our time. Let me just give you the last one. Be born again. Not be like you are born again. Not act like you are born again so that you will not say you have rebelled. Be born again. Choose God. Choose his ways. Every culture we have today Bring out morality from the scriptures. You can see, they don't have a sense of morality. The, because the natural man is wicked. When they are angry or angry, when they are angry, they don't say that it's just my feeling. They go to anger management class. They will say, I need, I need uh, what's the name of the... Um, Therapist. They will say, I need a therapist. But when they are feeling like a boy, they will not say he's bad. They will not say he's, uh, I need therapy. They will say, oh, that's me. That's just me. That's just how I feel. But when they are feeling angry, or when something, they will go to anger management class. Be born again. Know what, know what you carry. Know why you are here. Understand the faith. Be rooted. Don't just be a fairy fera Christian. Singing holy, lifting up holy hands, doing all of that. But choose, oh, in this present time, God, I will stand for you. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Ebenezer, 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 my help. Sing it. Ay, ay, ay. Ebenezer. Cut. Ebenezer. Ay, ay, ay. You're going to pray one prayer and say, Father, Father, hey, Father, open my eyes, open my ears, open my heart. Let me see you in this present time. Because if you have an encounter with God, your life will never remain the same again. It will be easy to live the life of Christ. It will be easy to stand for Jesus when you have convictions. When you have convictions, when you've seen Jesus. The Bible says, look into the perfect law of liberty that you might be free. With just one look, when you see Jesus, it will be easy. Kai.
God help me. Open my eyes. Ebeniza kata le predo sikaya reka pa na na makupe kete li predo sukupa. In this generation, when people are doing anyhow, hey, I want to be like you, God. I want to see you. I want to see you in your fullness. Keli ne ne ni na ma shata teke de dika. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. All eyes closed, please. I just want to give some people the opportunity this morning to surrender their lives to Jesus. You've never, you've been coming out, but still going back. But today, you want to stand. You want to choose Jesus and hold on to him tight. This is not a time for you to be, this is not a generation that you can be on the edge. It's either you are there or you are here. Or you've lost it. You know you've lost your identity. You don't know who you are anymore. You need Jesus. I just want you to raise your hand this morning. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Or you've never done it before. This is an opportunity. See, there are still people that love Jesus. Don't think, don't think, don't think because the media is loud that everybody is bad. No. There are people that are chasing after Jesus. So if you want to truly rededicate your life to Jesus and you want to say, Father, I'm coming back home. Father, I'm coming back home. I'm choosing you today and for the rest of my life. Let me just see your hands up. Anybody like that here? Anybody like that here this morning? Amen. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word sent to us. Let your word find expression in our hearts. Let us become sons truly. Let us stand for you in this generation. Let's, Father, we want you to look down from heaven and say, that's my son. We want you to be proud of us. Help us. We can't do it by ourselves. It's not possible. Help us. And let your name be glorified in our lives. Thank you, Father. We we'll give you all the glory. Come on, celebrate Jesus in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Just keep clapping. Wow. Amen. Amen. You know, now I'm afraid of this generation. You know, when he used the word glammed up, I was like, I've not come across that before. I quickly streamed, glammed up, I wrote it down. So I went to, you know, as a Berean Christian to check. And I, I was, I was as, <laughs> astonished as to what I found. When you dress attractively, when you wear makeup, you are glammed up. Hallelujah. Look at the person by your side. Are they glammed up? Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Please, can we stretch our hands to him and pray for him? Let's stretch our hands and pray that the Lord will increase his grace and anointing upon his life. Let's pray that the wisdom of God will rest upon him afresh. That the word of God, the counsel of God, the ordinance of God will never depart from his life. Let's pray that he will not be victim of the assignment that he just carried out in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the life of your son. Uh, we are grateful for how you send him to minister to us today. Lord, we pray that all through his life he will not see shame. The Bible has made, I mean, the Lord has made some to be custodian of his grace. Lord, I pray that he will be a custodian of your grace. The Bible referred to some men as oracles of God. I pray that Brother Emmanuel or that Oladui will always be an oracle of God. That it is not sort a of shadow. Lord, we pray that you keep him on the straight and narrow. And through him and by him, let nations be one to Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's, let's just have our seat. Thank you. God bless you, Brother Emmanuel. That was powerful. Amen and amen. So we're going to take our, our mission offering quickly. Uh, this is the third Sunday of the month. And uh, we told us in this house that we have mission outposts in some other nations. For example, we have a mission outpost in India. 
So normally we send money to them just to make the work of the ministry easy for the pastors there. Uh, they send us pictures at different intervals of how the Lord has been using our money to minister to lives. So your money that you send on errand will be justifiably used. So if you don't have cash, you can send Interact to missionhevziba at gmail.com. I repeat, missionhevziba at gmail.com. And the Lord will bless you as you do that. Please, there are people that are suffering. People who don't really know where the next meal is going to come from. So that they, those are the kind of individuals that the Lord has placed in our heart to help. So please, send your money on errand, especially to where your leg may eventually never get to. We are still hoping that we go to Nepal this year to Kathmandu. So, we keep saying that every year, right? But the youth have promised that they're going to champion it this year. You are saying, ah, by default you have promised that you're going to lead us to Kathmandu this year. In Jesus' name. If we have given our offering, let's rise up on our feet. Let's just appreciate the Lord for what he has done. From the beginning of the service, even to the moment that bro emmanuel dropped the mic we know that this service has been a blessing so let's say father we thank you lord we thank you we are grateful we are grateful thank you for how you have positioned us to be blessed even this morning and thank you lord for the vessel that you sent to bless us that we are grateful we say may your name forever be praised in the name of jesus can we pray for the youth and pray like lord keep them lord keep them rooted in the name of jesus Lord, we pray that they will be built up and they will be established in the faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because we know you are a prayer answering God. Father, we thank you for the people that have given their offerings for missions. Lord, we pray that they will never lack any good thing all the days of their life. In the name of Jesus. It has been said that we are all two paycheck away from food bank. This one will never lack. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. We pray that, Lord, in the second service, let your glory be multiplied. Let your power be visible in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we now say, surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Prophesy to somebody by yourself. Say, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Forever and ever. Amen. We are redeemed. Just the first stanza. We are redeemed. We are redeemed. United in love. Jesus is for us. We shall come. We are together. We are together. United in love, Jesus is for us, we shall come, sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the first service, and you wish that Brahma will come another time. Sing hallelujah with me. Hallelujah. Aha. Hallelujah. 